So we are the Autonomous Light Assessment Drone for Dark Sky Studies. Uh, we're a team that consists of myself, Takara, Elliot, Alex, Devi, Brett, and Matthew. We will present the poster section by section from left to right. Um, for this project, we had three main objectives. Uh, the first objective was to build an autonomous light assessment drone to access areas beyond human reach that would be used for research and for the U of U class, city and, city and metropolitan planning at the U, the class that is looking to minimize the effects of light pollution. The second objective was to equip the drones with a sky quality meter to measure sky glow and an illuminance sensor to measure light sources. Our last objective was to develop a command station which communicates with the drone. The culmination of these objectives are seen in figure one, where we are commanding the drone to measure a light source autonomously. Under that, figure two shows the modeled sky quality for places like Las Vegas and Chicago, contrasted with more remote areas like Yellowstone. Uh, it's modeled based on satellite data of uh, Illuminance. Uh, it also shows the Bordeaux classes. The Bordeaux class is a, a scale of the brightness of objects in the night sky. The measured data we've collected in Helper Utah has also been added and that will be discussed more later. Figure 3 shows a map of the United States displaying the satellite sky quality estimates graphically. Uh, as far as our design goals go, we were creating a, two drones that will autonomously collect light data in a local area for students or researchers to analyze. Uh, the drone needs to be safe and simple to operate so that it can be operated reliably by people without a highly technical background. Uh, why are we measuring light in the first place? Uh, light pollution is damaging to some wildlife and to human sleeping patterns, so it's very important to understand. For example, newly hatched sea turtles will mistake city lights for the glow of the moon on the water when they're trying to get to the ocean. They'll end up wandering city streets and dying there. Uh, there are moths that use the moon to navigate as well and are similarly, similarly thrown off. Uh, noctil nocturnal wildlife in general also see a number of detrimental effects. However, while global light pollution is well measured by satellite data, uh, light pollution on a local scale is neither well measured or well understood. The best methods of measuring pollution on a local scale are mostly handheld devices and therefore they have a very limited reach. So the drone design specifications that we received from our clients uh, were the sensors that we were to use. Takara mentioned that they are a sky quality meter and a, an illuminant sensor. So as we were doing our research, we found that we would need a platform with stable flight characteristics exceeding 500 grams. Testing this platform, we were able to maintain stable flight up to 750 grams. This weight was above the optimum and our battery life suffered as we attempted to add more weight. We optimized uh, the motor and propeller combination to work with a payload of 500 grams. We found that the required sensors and necessary hardware to mount them was less than 500 grams. So the battery life uh, that we tested with the required sensors and necessary hardware was better than expected, exceeding the goal of 15 minutes uh, with a 25 minute flight time. The other specifications were decided by interchanging hardware and ch changing settings on the flight controller. Uh, these include the max height, the max uh, horizontal speed, the max and the max vertical speed. The max height was, uh, was changed by the a LiDAR that we chose. And the Lux resolution was required by the client at 0.1 and we found a sensor that had a resolution of 0.01 for better measurements at night. So the two required sensors, the sky quality meter uh, and the illuminance sensor, measures sky brightness and Lux. The sky brightness is measured uh, by the reflections off the atmosphere, so the sensors facing the sky, and the illuminance sensor measures Lux, uh, so it needs to face down over the light source. All, of the, all the other parts that you can see labeled were assembled and tested last semester. This semester, our main focus was assembling and integrating the sensors into our drone design. Some of the things that were designed last, since, uh, last semester was the wireless communication, GPS, the onboard computer, 
and other things that you can see in figure four. So uh, we needed to have this finished before a client trip that happened mid-February. This was um, the planned final test of the prototype. This trip was before spring break, so the integration and design of the hardware and software of the sensors was finished before this trip. We built a final prototype, and it is what you see pictured on the poster. We took feedback from our clients after the trip and were able to make a few changes. Due to the unforeseen circumstances, <clears throat> we couldn't mount other parts we deemed necessary. These included a protective shell over the components, LED shields, and propeller guards. The propeller guards were for the safety of the client. The LED shields were designed to ensure no extra light from the drone would affect the illuminance sensor as it was taking measurements. Okay, so figure five shows the software and communication architect. The Thomas Light Assessment drone system is broken into two main subsystems, the command station and the drone. Both systems use the robot operating system, also known as ROS, to link all the various subsystems. To communicate between the command station and the drone, short-range Wi-Fi and long-range XB communication were used. The command station has a JavaScript HTML-based GUI for selecting mission types, sending waypoints, and taking off and landing commands. The GUI also has a global map that shows the current position of the drone and its past trajectory. Once the drone has received its mission type, waypoints, and has been sent the takeoff commands, the drone can perform the missions completely autonomously. The waypoints are sent to the flight controller SDK module, which converts them into velocity commands. These velocity commands are then sent to the flight controller, which converts them into motor commands. All data is stored on the drone and can be post-processed after the flight. So as mentioned, on the weekend of February 21st, the team traveled to Helper, Utah with the Dark Sky Studies class here at the U for a weekend of data collection. This was the primary deliverable that our client wanted from us, so it was very important to us that the drone performed well, and we put in many hours during the weeks prior flying and testing the drone. The mayor of Helper facilitated our stay and intends to use our, da our data to help support her goal of receiving dark sky certification for the town. In addition to data collection, we also participated in tours and a town hall event on light pollution, which seemed very well received by the local population. We took the data at two locations. The first was a dirt lot near a cemetery right on the edge of town. The second was the town's main street. The lot by the cemetery served as our reference dark location, where we collected data in a lot that had no lighting at all, as well as by a single um, solitary LED light. On Main Street, we for, flew in four different spots along the road, doing vertical column scans where the drone flies up to five meters, takes data, comes back down, and then we would do a, ten, a 15 meter mission so that we had data above and below the light fixtures. While in Helper, the drone took quality measurements and pretty much flew flawlessly, except for a minor Wi-Fi connectivity problem on the second night. It turned out not to be much of a big deal because we ended up getting rained out anyway. So if I could uh, draw your attention to figure six, on the left side, we have an image of the drone flying at 15 meters above that solitary LED light. And then on the right side, we have the drone queued up in one of our locations ready to do a flight on Main Street. So if you look just below those um, images, you can see the results from the helper trip in figures seven and eight. So figure seven shows the illuminance sensor data that we collected and the higher the value means that there is more direct light that is being produced. The figure just next to it, which is figure eight, shows the SQM results where the lower the value means the more the light source is contributing to sky glow. We can see that in figure seven for the dark cemetery parking lot, which are the two gray bars that you can see at the beginning, the values are exactly what we were expecting. They show very low values with little variation as the drone increased in height from two to 10 meters. As the illuminant sensor is measuring direct light, we can expect that in a dark parking lot away from the city, there will be little to no light. These values also fall in class four on the Bordel scale in figure two, which was mentioned earlier. And this represents the transition between suburban and rural environments. Um, this again verifies that the data we collected was correct as the cemetery was just outside of the city of Helper. 
Um, looking next at the green bars in the figures, they represent the 10 and 15 meter flights over the shielded lamppost in the cemetery, which was an LED light. Um, the recorded values have little variation for both the illuminance sensor and the SQM, but when we look at the remaining blue and yellow bars um, representing Main Street data, we see much larger variations as height changes. So the illuminance sensor shows little variation for the LED light on Main Street, but a very large variation for the sodium vapor light in the same location. This, um, this distance above the, um, this shows that the uh, sodium vapor lights are much brighter than the LED lights. And uh, looking at the SQM sensor results, we see that both the Main Street light fixtures have high variations in results based on the distance above the light source. And because neither of these light fixtures were shielded, they contribute more to sky glow than the cemetery light did. So we can see that both the LED lights and sodium vapor lights contribute to sky glow when unshielded but um, sodium vapor lights contribute much, much more. So uh, the conclusions that we were able to draw from our helper experiment were that it is possible to analyze light sources to determine which are more light polluting um, to our night skies with our drone. And that out of the three fixtures that we analyzed, shielded light sources contribute very little to sky glow and are be much better for pollution than unshielded lights. But sodium vapor lights that are not shielded contribute more significantly than an LED light would. To summarize our project, we developed an autonomous light assessment drone to gather lighting information in 3D that was both safe and simple to operate. We equipped the drone with the sky quality meter and an illuminance sensor. We validated the performance through outdoor field experimentation and helper, where we found that sodium vapor lights affect sky brightness more than LED fixtures. Since our project had to be done before spring break, we weren't affected by the outbreak that much. Um, a couple of, th of the things that we did want to do that we weren't able to was uh, we wanted to create a video instruction, instruction tutorials to operate the drone. Um, and we wanted to create a protective shell that would fit over the components, um, LED shields, as well as propeller guards. Um, so after spring break, what we did instead is we created a user manual and a paper that we will be publishing to the Dynamic Systems and Control Conference. We would, we would like to thank the Keck Foundation for funding the project and the listed professors for their guidance and expertise. We're going to show a video of the helper trip now and then after which we will answer questions. Give me just one second. So, like Takara said, we'll be showing uh, one of a video of one of our 15 meter flights from Helper, one of the Main Street flights. And uh, you can see the the drone go up. It hovers at 15 meter above one of the sodium vapor lights. It's set to uh, only start taking data once it reaches the programmed height and uh, GPS waypoint. So that eliminates some of the noise. And then here it is coming down for a nice soft landing. Any questions? <laughs> 